The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, folks. Welcome to the September 24th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I can make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past eight o'clock in the morning. That's right. If you're listening in at the normal time slot at one o'clock, this is being recorded live between eight and nine. We're going to try to make it as pertinent as we can for you uh, at that uh, 1 o'clock time frame. And thanks for listening, regardless of uh, what's the uh, show. So uh, let's go ahead and get this uh, show uh, started right now. Now, you can give us a call if you're listening in live. You do that by calling 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, but you're listening live, you can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Send it early. And in the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question, and in our Tiger's Den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Les Show. Right now we've got the, uh, let me get the screens going here. Sorry about that. We've got uh, the U.S. equity futures are trading lower. Dow is down 141 points. NASDAQ's off 95. S&P 21 and the Russell's off 13. Spot Volatonics is up a buck 54. It is uh, trading above the top of its, uh, or the its 50-day exponential moving average. It's always uh, uh, troublesome for the ES mini, but we'll take a look at what's going on in the charts. As far as last night is concerned, Asia was a bit mixed. Nikkei, a big 2% move, up uh, 609 points. We'll take a look at those charts, what they mean. In uh, Europe right now, both the DAX and FTSE trading lower. The DAX stronger to the downside, 117 points. Uh, that's about 7 tenths of a percent, and the FTSE is off 17, a quarter of a point. A uh, quarter of a percentage point. Uh, gold is up a buck. Silver's down 15 cents. Lights be crude up 27. Natural gas up 11 pennies. So that's a big move there. Get the 30 year Treasury down uh, six ticks. The US dollar is up about 30 cents. She's trading at 93.32. So let's begin the day by trying to understand okay, futures are trading lower. What does that mean? Well, for me, I'm going to go take a look. Or we're going to take a, a tour here. We're going to go take a look at the 30-minute time frame charts because I believe these are the charts here right now as we speak. And I know this may not be as pertinent at 109 in the afternoon, but this will help to set up perhaps the day in, in understanding what the market is doing right now. So as we take a look at these 30-minute time frame charts, we've got four here. In the upper left-hand side, you have the ES Mini. So last night, um, when was this? Uh, when did this top? This uh, forms a TD nine count top at two o'clock yesterday afternoon. And you saw the markets move lower. Uh, it was uh, signaled by that TD nine count top out there. And now we have a TD nine count bottom that formed at 430 this morning. And just as we were coming on the air at 8 a.m., price closed just below that key level of support, meaning if there's a close below this area here, this area that low is uh, 44.15.75. Price is right back above it right now. So if we get two consecutive closes below that, look, the next level of support, this is really what I want to be able to get out to you, is at the 44.01 level. That's the TD9 breakout area. So that would be where price would target if price closes below this level. But there is really a valid type of a bottom here. You can see that oscillator and change line has changed colors. We should see price and that line test each other over the coming sessions. I'm not saying it's going to happen by 815, but we should see it over the coming sessions out here. Now, if we take a look at the NQ, I'm going to pull this back in a moment. But if it busts through its price target, its breakout level is down at 14881. So now I'll pull this back here. You can see you can see it's got a nice TD9 count top. And again, as we came on the air at 8 a.m., 
Uh, price had closed just below that. So we've got to watch this because that's signaling that price could make that move to uh, 14,981. Now we're looking for two consecutive closes at this stage below that level, that level bar number nine, by the way, that price point so you can monitor 15,206. If we take a look at the uh, Dow equity future contract, also a TD9 count bottom and price has held. So that's at the uh, level, let me give you that number to monitor. That's going to be at 34,500. Closes below 34,500 are going to suggest move back to the 34,273 area. The Russell 2000 did not generate a TD9 count bottom. It generated a TD9 count, but it did not generate a valid TD9 count bottom because, oh, hold on. Nope, it did not. Uh, yeah, it did not. But it does have an A to B equals CD to the downside. And price is trading right now below that bullish engulfing candle. That was one at 630 that confirmed that pattern. That's at 2242. And continue closer below that should signal a move back to the 2221 area. Now, pulling back and testing the TD9 breakout levels on these intraday charts, should that unfold and should they hold? That's sort of a bullish message. What do you mean, Stevie? Good, good question. Let me pull over the 60-minute time frame chart out here. And uh, so just switch to a different time frame. And I, I have a cleaner one than this. It's got a, a, you know, a bunch of my, uh, my signals on here. Uh, let me just grab the cleaner one. Uh, no, I'm just going to leave it like this. Here's really what I want to be able to share to you. So the green lines are resistance. And the red lines are support. When price starts breaking through support, you typically go down to a new, uh, the next support level. Uh, it should you be able to find one or until it makes some type of bottoming signal. But in the down markets, bearish, we'll just use bearish as the term. That's directionally speaking. What we see is these TD9 count breakout levels fail. Now, I switched to a 60-minute versus a 30-minute. And that reason for that is the ES Mini was providing us with the best overall signals at both support and resistance on the 60-minute time frame. For example, the first bounce that came off of the uh, lows ran right in resistance to that 43.93.75 level. Once price got above that, which was yesterday, uh, that signal moving up to the next TD9 breakdown levels out here. But the point that I really want to make, and it, certainly I, I was making that with the 30-minute chart, I would say that the 60-minute overall is the more important time frame because this is still catching the 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 uh, the the feel for the market, the wave of the market, the the pattern of the uh, market out here, and so uh, the level of support to be watching here is 43.85.75. If price closes below that, that's a pretty decent signal that the ES Mini or that what we've seen out here in the market so far may be nothing more than just a counter trend rally. Now we have to go to the larger time frame charts, so let's do that, uh, and that means large time frame charts. Let's just go look at the uh, daily time frame out here. So I'm going to switch the screens. Give you a moment to get that accomplished out here. And now you're going to see the daily. So up in the upper left, you've got the ES Mini. So what we know about the oscillator and change line, that's the uh, green and red line. It changes color depending on whether the price oscillator is above zero or below zero. Green when it's above, red when it's below. But nonetheless, it still acts or can act as a, a key level of support or resistance. So if we were wondering... Why did the ES Mini stop where it did yesterday? Well, it's that oscillator and change line. And that is where a counter trend rally, which right now that is still a possibility in the markets. We have really two signals here. So the ES Mini has both an A to B equal CD to the downside. It has a Gartley buy pattern. The A to B point was like this. And I just copy that, or I'm just going to grab that. And the uh, C to D was like that. And that was formed with that three river morning start. So we've got certainly a bullish I Gartley buy pattern out here, but we have resistance that is holding as well. Steve Rhodes with TFNN will be right back. We'll continue looking at the markets. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, up, folks. So we're taking a look at the uh, daily equity future contracts out here. These charts don't have the TAS market profiles. We'll take a look at those uh, momentarily. But here we take a look at the ES mini, the upper left-hand corner. Uh, what we've got is, uh, as we were showing just before we went to the break, there's uh, Gartley buy patterns that are established on all four equity future contracts. In order for that to happen, in order to complete an A to B equals CD to the downside or upside, to the downside, you need bullish reversal candles. So you can see here in the ES mini had that three river morning star pattern you have both a bullish engulf and three river morning star inside the nq you have that three river morning star pattern inside the ym and the same thing inside the russell 2000 so we've established that they have valid bottom patterns the question is well where's resort and we have different messages this morning uh, unfortunately or fortunately and that is this if you take a look at the es and the nq well if we take we we're talking about the es so the es uh, made the strong made a strong run yesterday ran right into resistance at its oscillator and change line if price is unable to close above that level it may be signaling to move back to test the uh, support level which is going to be the support level is really the low of that three river morning star candle that's the one really from monday that's at the 4293 area so that is a, a valid possibility we still have to go take a look at the daily profiles which we will so that you have those numbers as well. So you got valid bottom and resistance that is held. Now, if price is able to close above a green oscillator and change line, so write this number down in your pad of paper, and that's at 44, 42. We're taking a look at the ES mini. That would then switch the signal to bullish. Not that you know. So we have a bullish pattern, but price is is, uh, is found resistance. If price can close above that resistance level, that green oscillator and change line, that could signal either move back to the top of its profile depending on where that is priced, or back to its all-time highs. Really the same pattern inside of the NQ. Now, the NQ is weaker than the ES from the standpoint that yesterday price did not make its way up to its oscillator and change line, 15,397. So I don't have as clear a message that a key level of uh, resistance failed inside the NQ like we do for the ES Mini. Now, if we take a look at the Dow, here's the opposite message. The Dow, which was the weakest indice this week, 
um, was when I say weakest indice, from a profile standpoint, price was able to get down and actually get below the bottom of its weekly profile. Price right now is above it, signaling a potential that this week's action was nothing more than a false breakdown and the consolidation pattern will continue. But the point here inside the Dow Equity Future contract is right now, price is pulling back and testing its red oscillator and change line. And if price closes below that, let me give you that number. Uh, that number is going to be 34,478. That's going to suggest that price could make a, its way back to the bottom of this pattern here, the low of that Morningstar uh, uh, candlestick uh, formation. Of course, we need to go take a look at those task profiles. But what if price stays above a red oscillator and change line? Well, then it still has its bullish ways or says at least there should be more of a retracement higher into the market or more of a rally. The Russell 2000, as you can see, closed above its red oscillator and change line, remains above it right now. And this is the Russell 2000 is the strongest. So in order, the Russell is number one from a strength standpoint, then the Dow, mm, and then uh, it's really a, a toying cost between the NQ and the ES Mini. Okay, so now let's go flip over and take a look at our TAS market profiles because these are important as, uh, as well. Uh, they're very key levels of support and resistance. Let's uh, get to uh, that chart out here. Let's stop with this screen. Let's get back to the main screen out here. And now what you've got is we take a look at the retracement of the pullback. So we know when we opened the show, we were looking at the 30-minute time frame charts, key levels of support that, uh, you know, in a couple instances, we saw prices below those levels. Certainly the larger-term time frame, the, doll, the uh, daily charts are more important than the 30-minute, but we're trying to do the play-by-play -play here. And... Uh, and as we do the play-by-play, uh, -play, play, those key levels of support, for example, the ES Mini, the key level of support there was its TD9 count uh, uh, bottom that took place at 4.30 this morning. Again, that price level is 44.15. So 44.15 fails. That signaled a move back to 44.01. Well, if we take a look at the bottom of the daily profile, now this is a bullish structure daily profile that is formed inside the ES Mini. Maybe on the ES Mini, maybe it's just easier if you look at this chart. Is that easier for you? I think so. A little bit less clustered. So here you can see this is a bullish structured profile. Now it's bullish in structure, folks, because the center, which is where both buyers and sellers reside, the center is closer to the bottom than it is to the top. So we have more buyers in the range of 4407 and 4426. So that should be a strong support level. So 4407 is going to be another real key level on a closing basis. So this is really pertinent if you're listening at 123. Of course, you want to take a look at what it looks like at the end of today's trading session. But a close below that then signals to you and I that price goes back and either gets to those trend lines that you see or back to test the uh, bottom of the uh, bullish uh, Three River Morningstar candle inside the ES Mini. That gets down to a low of 42.9375. Let's do the same thing here. And just some, some things, because this, what, what this does is this gives you overall what's going on on the larger time frames for example if you look at the quarterly time frame chart you know it means everything that goes on on monthly weekly daily and certainly intraday is nothing but noise so in that longer term picture for the es mini it has a confirmed a to b equals cd that should take us first to 29 i'm sorry 5038 and then to 5827 so that is the longer term prognosis right now for the es mini but if we take a look at what transpired to this week what we saw price do is head back and test and reject the bottom of that uh, weekly profile, 43.12. And what we know about these profiles is that in order, and here's the ES uh, Mini, where's the ES Mini? In order to get a change in trend signal out here, we need to see, just as we did back in the uh, February 2020 timeframe, this took place the week of uh, February 25th. 2020, the next week was a, a con confirmation of two closes below that key level of support, and that was a change in trend signal. And we can see that when we take a look at the ES Mini and all the moves higher, any retracements have found support at that uh, weekly um at the weekly uh, uh, bottom of its uh, profile out here. Now, there was one pierce of it, uh, and that was on the week of May 12th. Remember, we like to see two consecutive closes above resistance, below support, to confirm that it's a real break. And this proved, in this case here, to be a false break. So this week, what do we have out here? Again, we're looking at a daily time frame with both daily and weekly bottom of their profile levels uh, shown out here. So no change in trend inside the ES Mini. It looked like we were going to have a change in trend when we take a look at the Dow Equity Future contract. That is this uh, bottom left because price did on Monday close below it. It stayed below it on uh, Tuesday. 
trade. And it uh, stayed below it on uh, Wednesday, but yesterday price got back above it. Now, when I say two consecutive closes, I'm not talking about two consecutive daily closes below a weekly profile. I would be talking about two weekly closes below the bottom of that profile to confirm a change in trend signal. But that's not what we are dealing with right now. We are not dealing with any kind of change in trend whatsoever. Period. However, what happens if the Dow Equity Future contract closes below 34,276 today? Well, then what we would have is week one below that level. And if we get a second week next week below that level, that would be signaling a change in trend. That being said, what we can also clearly see here is that each of these equity future contracts are trading in a sideways consolidation market. And what that tells us is that is one up for the intraday traders, the day traders. That means paying attention to those 15, 30, 60 minute charts out there are very important from a trading standpoint because really kind of hard to get a swing. You, you might say, hey, Steve-O, price got down or towards the bottom of the consolidation. Should it now move up to the top of the consolidation? Perhaps, but there's resistance levels that have to be broken. And as we took a look at that, those resistance levels or initial resistance levels have been broken inside the Dow and the Russell. Just not the ES and the NQ. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Thanks for listening in. This show is being recorded today early. It's uh, 8.30 in the morning, but if you're listening at 1.30, thanks so much for doing that. Uh, we're going to try to make this as pertinent as we can. So let's go to our first request out here. It's from John inside the Tigers. Now let's take a look at ticker symbol IGV. That's the iShares Trust for the uh, tech uh, software ETF. And the uh, question is, what are the TAS levels? So we're showing the uh, TAS market profile levels. Uh, those are the uh, blue, well, those are the multicolored uh, lines that are on my screens out here. And what we can see, and the question is, and TD9 counts, we'll go take a look at that. Is this software busy? TF topping is the uh, question. So we're going to go answer that question when we look at the other charts. But first, with regard to the profile levels, we can see that price is trading with inside a bearish structured profile. Again, the center is much closer in proximity to the top than it is to the bottom. So the reason Resistance level that this needs to take out to be on its bullish ways would be 424.80. We can see that price is trading above the top of the monthly profile. Shoot, that's way down to 240. And it's also trading above the top of the weekly, which is 412.37. So the only resistance that it has with regard to sellers, John, those are sitting in this range here. And the range, again, 424.80 to 421.07, basically where price stopped yesterday. Now, the and we see an A to B equal CD pattern that is in place out here uh, to the upside on the weekly time frame with a larger price projection of either 452 or 496. Now let's go try to answer the question, uh, did this top, did this provide us with a topping pattern or a topping signal out here? So as we look at the daily time frame, the answer is yes, it did. This topped with a Rhodes Momentum Indicator uh, topping pattern that was confirmed with this little bear sash candle on September 7th. Now, when you get any kind of a topping pattern out there, that just simply gives you the right or tells you that price should make its way back to test support. And in essence, that is exactly what took place. On the trading day of September 20th, what price did was it pulled back and it tested its breakout level, 404.56. For those, those of you that are longtime listeners at TFNN, uh, you know, go back to the days when Tom just was doing one single show by himself. He would always talk about, hey, wait, don't, don't buy the breakout, but wait till price comes back to support. Well, the TD9 count pattern, uh, which is one of the things that John was talking about out here, you can see how that was forming. It did not was not the signal that formed the uh, top. Uh, it was uh, both wave number seven, that's letter G. So thanks to Basil Chapman, Saratoga Bob out there. Uh, but what price did was it pulled back the test out support. Now, if I were to have asked folks, where was the level of breakout support at most people would have chosen the swing point. The swing point was August 19th. But that's not what Stevie does. These numbers that come across the screen out here, 404.56, those are automated. Those are generated by the TD9 count pattern, which I teach, by the way. If you, and you really should want to know this pattern uh, if you're trading. So you just subscribe to Mastering Probability. You can do it for 29 days. doesn't cost you a thing. So what we have out here in the daily time frame, John, yes, it's got a topping pattern. But the test of support has been met. And now price is just trading into a resistance zone. So yes, it has top, but now what is it doing? And if price can clear the 424.80 level, I mean close above it, that says you head back to those highs. And if you take out the all-time highs, because that has a uh, a, a uh, resistance level created by that bear sash candle at 428.90, a close above that says that A to B equals CD pattern we looked at on the weekly time frame gets fulfilled. On a weekly basis, do we have any kind of a topping pattern or signal out here? And the answer is we don't. What I don't have to confirm this Rosemontum indicator top is some kind of bearish reversal candle. So therefore, and prices above the top of its uh, weekly profile, but you can see right now trading the resistance of the oscillator and change line. So closing above that would be bullish on the weekly basis, that meaning the oscillator and change line. It's already above the top of its profile, and if price can close above uh, 422.55, it's on its merry ways to the upside. On a monthly time frame, you do have bar number nine of a TD9 count. Now, what we know about this pattern is that the high of this pattern can form on the bar following bar number nine. So that means you may not see a top uh, from a monthly standpoint until next month. It could be this month, but it could also be next month. Could you be more definitive, Steve? Well, that just simply takes me back to the weekly and the daily time frame chart to see what's going on there. So, John, I hope that helps you out with regard to IGV. Thanks so much for writing in. And, folks, I'd love to hear from you as well. If you're listening, again, between 8 and 9, you can always send me an email, steve at tfn.com, or preferably would love to hear your voice, and you can give us a call at 877-927-6648. So let's go back to the NQ, because the NQ is really interesting out here with regard to its signal. And that is, uh, if you take a look at the daily time frame, 
And the daily time frame shows that the price had closed below the bottom of its uh, daily profiles out there. And then a brand new profile forms right here. It forms on the trading day of September 1st. And when this profile forms, when this profile forms, price is above it. So that tells us about overhead supply. And right now, the signal inside the NQ, we've got two signals. We have the valid bottom, the Gartley buy, but we also have where the counter trend rally should have failed. And where it should have failed was the center of that bullish structured profile. And that's at the 15, 332, 50 level. So you want to watch where is the NQ trading? So where's it trading at 830 at 135 in the afternoon? Is price above? 15,332, because if it is, that's a signal that then this is more than a counter trend rally and price should make its way back to the top of the profile. And that would be the 15,557 level. Granted support is the bottom of its uh, three river morning star candle. And that's at 14,807. And that would be the price target if price closes below the bottom of its pro pro profile at 15,257. Or it could be just simply a move down to one of these trend lines out here. But overall inside the NQ, what we have is simply a consolidation with inside the weekly profile. And that's at 14802 to 15301. All right. It's 836 in the morning, 136 in the afternoon. We should go take a look at Goldilocks. So what did gold do yesterday? As we take a look at the uh, its futures contract, what it did was it made its way back to its key level of support. So what we have here is we have a Gartley buy pattern. I'll go ahead and draw the uh, A to B equals CD in here. And in the Gartley buy pattern, you need an A to B equals CD pattern. And for me, the A to B equals CD pattern completes... Yeah, I've got to use the same candle for the bottom. So the B point is 914, and the C point is also 914. And what we can see is the 1 to 1 A to B equals CD, that, or 1 to 1.272, I should say, uh, that completed at about the 1738 level. So you have a Gartley pattern when you have a strong move, in this case here, Gartley buy, a strong move off the bottom, which we most certainly did in gold off of that flush low from August 19th. August 9th, I should say. Then you get the completed A to B equals C. Now, the reason why I say it's completed is because we had a bullish reversal candle. In this case here, it was a Western bullish reversal candle referred to as the key reversal bar. And that is the trading day of September 20th. And a key reversal bar, you need to be in an extended condition. Well, being at the 1 to 1.272 of an A to B equals CD, that qualifies for that. So that's the first element. The second element is the high and low of the prior bar needs to be exceeded. Well, that was accomplished. And then third, you have to close in the opposite direction of the trend, which in this case here was to the downside. It was making an A to B equals CD to the downside. That held. So yesterday was nothing more than still a test of a bullish a bottom out there at the 1742.30 level. That is what you want to watch today because if price closes below 1742.30, that says we've got more downside action. Could even mean, in the case of gold, retesting the lows from August the 9th. But so far, the Gartley pattern is in play. What we also know is that this formed a slightly bullish structured profile. And so, and that when that formed, you know, in essence, it was below price. It just makes the 1790 10 level a very key level of resistance. Now, this is the daily time frame chart. I have an eight panel chart out here for most things. We're going to switch over to that right now. Uh, and then we come back from the break. We'll go take a look at uh, Goldilocks and see what it is doing from an intraday standpoint. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be back in just a few moments. Having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So we, we've moved from the daily time frame chart, which showed that support, the key level of support being 1742.30. That's the level you're going to be watching today. Uh, that's all that price was doing yesterday and testing that. And it held. Now, here we're switching over to our eight panel chart. So we can take a look at multiple time frames, seeing what kind of messages they're providing. So on a monthly basis, you can see a TD9 count top out here that formed uh, quite a while ago. And that has just simply led to a sideways consolidation. With inside, it's a monthly uh, time frame uh, profile. It's really between the center. This is a bullish structured profile. So you could expect support at the center level, 1706. And that, in essence, is what we have seen out here. Um, you know, so it's a top that's led to a sideways consolidation, basically. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, this confirmed a Gartley buy pattern or certainly a buy the D point pattern when it formed that bullish hammer candle, which price had pulled back. First, it had a TD9 count top. Price pulls back to the breakout level of support, 1683. I think we just looked at an instrument that had done uh, something similar. On the daily basis, we now have the A to B or the Gartley buy pattern that we took a look at, and that 1742.30 level must hold. A close below that uh, says we may get back to the uh, revisit the lows uh, from uh, back in August. Now, if we take a look at that, so as we now move into or shift into the intraday charts, I, I use a 30, a 60, 122, 40, and a five hour time frame chart. You'll see on the five hour and the 240, you'll see those roads momentum indicator signals. So those, those are those black diagonal lines. So on a five on a five hour time frame chart here, so in essence, if we're going from daily, then we go down to the five hour time frame chart, there's already a confirmed roads momentum indicator bottom here. That, that level was not taken out. Let me just draw a, a blue line across here. So it still has the five hour chart it still has a confirmed roads momentum indicator bottom pattern out here perfect so you've got one bottom there signal that it's attempting to form a bottom by the way when this topped it was a td9 count top out here let's go take a look at the uh me moment the next uh pattern or intraday pattern that has any kind of confirmation of a daily time frame is the 30 minute so we have a 300 minute bottom and we've got a 30 minute bottom the 30 minute bottom is the one that's perhaps most important to us certainly at 8 44 in the morning we're trying to assess what gold is doing so here last night you get a confirmed roads momentum indicator bottom signal that is at 
1700 hours right at five o'clock when we get that bullish hammer candle that forms now what price is doing as we can see it's pulling back and it's going to test that key level of support so if there really was a bottom that was formed yesterday when we see uh, such as on the daily time frame we saw price coming back into that key level of support what we look for is to see is there some kind of a bottom well on the 30 minute time frame we were saying yes so if there's going to be a rally to the upside if it was an important bottom out here we should see 1744.40 hold right now we're trading at 1745 what happens if we see and there's 15 minutes left in this bar and we can't make the call until the bar actually closes so that means at 9 a.m. when we're off the air but what we should know right now is all price is doing is pulling back to test a breakout level of support if you were a person that had conviction that gold was going to move higher this would actually be your buy entry area now there's not a bottoming pattern that's going on on the 30 minute time frame chart it's just simply price pulling back to test support so 1744.40 holds during the day out here, that would be an interesting indica short term indication that gold is doing everything it can to try to attempt a, a bottom out here. Now, the interesting thing about gold, let's so see if it's still doing the same thing. I haven't taken a look at the U.S. dollar index for a bit of time, but on a uh, oh, I don't have the 30 minute chart here. I've got it elsewhere. Give me a moment. Sorry about that. And we can come back to the well. Uh, I'll go to a 30 minute chart momentary as long as I'm here. Um, and again, it's the importance of, of these tools, the TD9 counts, the oscillator and change line. First, take a look at where price ran into resistance yesterday. Again, nobody would have chosen 93.50 as the uh, swing point or the breakdown level. It just, it, it, you know, so that's why I use, that's why the power of the uh, TD9's out here. So we know where resistance was. Price stopped right there. Quite frankly, it generated a big old bearish engulfing candle, which confirmed a sell the D point of an A to B equals CD pattern. However, in order for any kind of a sell pattern to get any kind of attraction to the downside, price has got to get below a green oscillator and change line. So all price was doing yesterday in the U.S. dollar index was pulling back to test support. Yeah, it was a big move lower, but what does that mean? Well, the only way for me to be able to interpret that is by using these tools out here. So now I just was going to go to the 30-minute set of time frame charts out here. So now you're going to see a number of them. Across the top here, you've got the equity futures contracts. Down below, you've got the metals and the U.S. dollar index. So we can see on a 30-minute basis, well, we see now that uh, gold has been moving lower. But overnight, what we had was we had the U.S. dollar index moving higher and we had gold moving higher at the same time. And at some point in time in the future, uh, that's what I expect to see. And I expect to see that when uh, things just go to uh, hell in a handbasket really around the globe. As, because as people then continue to shift into uh, U.S. instruments, uh, they'll also shift into uh, or should shift into uh, gold as uh, well. So the real rallies in gold are when there's instability around the uh, globe out there. Uh, and then when I say instability, I'm referring to instability of uh, governments. Uh, that's when you really see the big, huge rallies into uh, Goldilocks. OK, so what else do we want to uh, take a look at that's pertinent for folks? Well. One thing that took place yesterday. So, you know, a few days ago, as the markets were moving lower, and we were trying to assess what was the message of the markets. One of the tools that we used was the uh, advanced decline oscillator for the New York Stock Exchange. And that is panel number two here. And what we notice, we know the patterns and the patterns are that bottoms form when that advanced decline oscillator gets into the extreme or the oversold condition. What you'll see out here is a plus 150 and a minus 150. Plus 150 is overbought, minus 150 is oversold, minus 250 is extremely oversold. So, and it's important for us to step back for a moment, it's Friday, and take a look at this week's action. Because many people at the beginning of the week on Monday uh, were saying, man, this market is cratering, uh, we're just simply going to uh, uh, go continue to go south. Uh, and I'm saying, hey, hold on a minute here. Uh, the uh, all what the advanced client when it gets down to that minus 150, you've got to expect some type of relief rally or a bottom. And and if you go chart this uh, indicator, this is nothing more than the advanced decline line and the difference between the uh, 19 and 39 daily exponential moving average. That's how the advanced decline oscillator is confirmed. The uh, um, uh, so. Uh, and now the other th element. So we've come from the extreme oversold condition. So that's the first thing out there. And, and we're now above yesterday was a close above that zero threshold level. When price and the advanced client oscillator is above or below zero, that tells us whether buyers or sellers are in control of the general markets. Now, here's the deal. And you'll see when buyers are in control, 
Oh, we've got a green uh, line that's uh, down below and a, and, and a red line. Just to, just to, But in order for buyers to really flex their muscles today, you need to see two consecutive, I know you've heard this a million times, now a million and one, two consecutive closes above that zero threshold level to uh, indicate that buyers are in control. So watch that because if, in fact, there's a close above that, that tells us buyers are in control of the general markets. If we take a look at market breadth, and that's important to do here, take a look at market breadth for the uh, equity uh, for or the ES Mini here, or the S and P 500. What we can see here is we're in bullish conditions. Oh shoot, you're not seeing that. Sorry about that. Oh, you didn't see that last chart. Son of a gun. Sorry about that. I tend to uh, do that. Forget which screen that's on. So let me uh, show this here. My apology. Let me show this. You can grab this inside the uh, Tiger's Den. A uh, good chart to have, just as far as an indication of. Hey, when you start getting down to that minus 150 level, folks, you got to start looking or anticipating that you're going to at least see some type of bouncer bottom. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, thanks to all those who have joined me early here as we recorded today's show between 8 and 9. Hey, look, we're going to do this for at least the next, uh, anticipate at least the next three Fridays out there. So if you want to mark that on your calendars, it's, uh, the regular show, uh, uh, Trader's Edge, uh, during the week, Monday through Thursday, will be at the uh, 1 to 2 slot. But on Fridays, I'm going to do the 8 to 9 uh, right now, at least for the next uh, few weeks out here, possibly through the end of Oc uh, end of October. And always fun to do the uh, show early so that we can kind of get our sights on, you know, what what is the meaning of what the uh, market is doing as we speak. Now, another area to be watching come the end of the day or maybe 154 in the afternoon, if you're listening into uh, to the normal slot out here, is the exponential moving, 50 day exponential moving average for the spot volatility. Now, yesterday's close, you know how important this is for Stevie. It's uh, kind of one of our it's our it's our wind indicator if you will. the wind blowing from the north, blowing from the south out here. And yesterday, the wind just simply died. Because as the close came in, the 50-day exponential moving average was 1863. And price closed at 1863. And so in my evening reports, I had to tell subscribers, uh, I am confused, because I think the market is confused as to what it wants to do. Hey, we know we've got the valid bottoms. We took a look at those in the four equity future contract during the show out here. But we also know that right now that spot volatility is above its 50 day exponential moving average. And that is always troublesome for the S&P 500. And how do you know that? You can go back and you can create a chart like this. And at the bottom panel is the 50 day exponential moving average. And the top are the blue lines out here are the uh, uh, are the uh, spot volatility index. And the, uh, reg the, the green and yellow uh, boxes, rectangles out here show you what uh, typically happens to price inside the S&P 500 based upon where that spot volatility index is uh, trading out there. So again, folks, uh, thanks for listening. We'll just simply switch over here real quickly. Take a look at uh, those uh, uh, eight 30 minute time frame charts out here. Get a quick peek at uh, what may be going on. And uh, you can see the ES mini. It's broken below support, but it's triggered a road's momentum indicator signal. So too has the NQ. Should you see a bullish reversal candle, that's going to be a signal of a bottom from a short-term basis for those charts. Folks, have a fantastic weekend. Go USA. Let the ride. Thank you.